I um, ended up stumbling across this book about a, this young couple that were drug addicts in the 1970s in the Lower East Side of New York. And what struck me about the story, it was a love story. It wasn't just like, you know, here's a bunch of people doing heroin. It was actually like, here's two people who love each other and they're addicted to heroin. And so it actually was really profound to me. And I was like, that's what I want to do. I want to be that, whatever that is. I'm Dominic Rocco, and I'm a photographer, journalist, and writer. I'd spent the year looking at why Ciudad Juarez had gone from being the most violent city in the world to where it is now, which is like actually far behind a lot of the U.S. cities that are murder capitals. And so we'd spent a lot of time in the course of that investigation looking at institutional changes, judicial reform, policing, like social development projects. And I was really interested at what happens at the individual level. Like this latest project that I did with the Pulitzer Center is looking at this young man named Diego. He used to be a gang member. I've actually known him for a long time. He's 18 years old. But when I met him, he was 15 or 16 and he was into a lot of trouble. And I've seen him develop. He's a really interesting individual in that he has always had that sort of double side. And I think all of us have that. The like Aztecs actually had, there was no like two, there was no hell or, or evil. Like there was just like within each of us, there was actually both. And I actually find that to be more accurate. He calls his alter ego El Oso, which was actually his nickname when he was involved in all this crime and stuff. El Oso is the bear, and the bear is like this thing that he's constantly struggling with, and it's like personified in his own mind. Ciudad Juarez became super violent, I think, in a large part because there was a huge unrepresented population of young people in the city. And when the Sinaloa cartel came in to take over the city, the two cartels actually used those gangs and within the same conflict created this perpetual culture of horrific violence and not just like small violence but like extreme violence. And Diego was actually representative of that. He was a child of maquila workers who worked in factories making very little money. Because of problems that he had at home, he went and sought refuge in the street. And the people who were around were other gang members who were kind to him, quite frankly. And that same openness made him very vulnerable when he was 10 years old, when he started working for the drug cartels, when you cover a place like this. It's like you realize that you can be the best person you can be and at the end of the day like it doesn't necessarily mean that that's going to get you in a better place in life in our in our young minds it seems like the appropriate action i mean it makes sense like it really does i think like why are these kids like killing each other it's like well because they killed their friend and they're upset and that's is how you create retribution and in their mind if they like squash the beef they're going to be in a position where they're all of a sudden powerful and they're not being hurt anymore you know i think so much of this like anger and aggression is actually a way of protecting yourself hopefully they can see this work and like look at okay well this didn't work out for a lot of people and maybe you can figure out a way to take a step back and i say figure out a way because like let's be real like if they're living in that cycle it's it's not it's not easy you can't just say tomorrow like i'm done like i'm gonna step out of this if you're in that world it, it takes time